Many of the details are subliminal. You ask someone to point them out and they wouldn't be able to point them out. But it does affect how one perceives and absorbs the environment that they're in. It's the subtlety of the architecture that makes the difference between a building and art and architecture. I knew I wanted to be an architect when I was 11 years old. I never questioned it. I'm one of those few people that is fortunate enough to be doing exactly what they enjoy in life. Born and raised here, grew up here, loved this area, and to be able to, you know, make your living doing what you want to do, and I still enjoy it to this day. These come around once in a lifetime. To have the freedom to take the time, you're not being pushed. Uh, I have a homeowner who's willing to put the resources into whatever it takes, and just to be able to get all the different players involved and actually see that thing come together. It's, you know, it's, it's happens once in a lifetime. I've built a lot of beautiful homes, but to have one of this magnitude that has so many different special features in room after room, it's, you know, you don't get to do it very often. I'm grateful that he chose me to do it. It's an understatement to say that the detail and the, the planning that his office has to go through and then convey that on paper for me to interpret how to put it together on site, it's, it's huge. I spent three years being a contractor and building everything that I designed because I didn't want to be an architect that could draw it but not understand how it went together. So I did it once, I don't want to have to do it again. <laughs> Particularly in this environment where these guys work in, you know, 10, 15 degrees all winter long. It's, uh, you have to be a hardy New Englander to do that. <laughs> I've aged out of that. <laughs> aged out. I've aged out of it as well, but <laughs> yeah. unfortunately I'm still, I'm still doing it. A site such as this site is rich in character. Not only do you have a strong visual focal point with the lake, but inherent in sites like this in New Hampshire, they have some beautiful mature vegetation. Since, since this whole region has significant amounts of ledge and rock um, formations that were left during the Ice Age receding, they give the site a great deal of character. And you can use that all in the architecture. Consequently, when we're designing the house, Rather than sitting the house on top of the landscape, we try to let the house grow out of the landscape. The stonemasons were here basically for two and a half years. You know, it's all hand chiseled. Each piece, they were hand-picked field stone, so every rock's been handled five or six times. And, and the volume of stonework on the outside, including all the chimneys, the chimney tops, and it, it's just an enormous task. Once you actually enter the home, you come into a, a grand vestibule that has some extremely interesting classical architectural details. A spiral stair that literally links all four floors of the house and penetrates from the basement area up all the way through to the third floor a living area of the house. And it's also expressed as a cylindrical tower with a clear story of windows that wrap around the entire top portion of the tower, which allows natural light to spill down that stairwell into all four floors of the house. That's a very strong architectural element and was an extraordinary accomplishment by the builder to actually build it so that it looks like the way we drew it. I'll never forget, there was a time I was headed to the lumberyard and I met a guy at the end of the road with an old beat up jeep and he rolled in and said, is this a happy job? I'm here to look at doing some stair work. First impression, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is the right one. Scruffy hair, beard, the, the best, absolute best mechanic I've ever seen. You can't find a joint. Each one of those is an individual piece, the balusters and then the blocks, but what most people don't even take into consideration on those radiuses, each piece on the radius it takes a square 
newel, but it's actually chiseled into the mortise on an angle to follow a radius. And each one of those was hand chiseled, top, bottom, and the block, top and bottom. And to do that without having one slip up in the whole staircase is just incredible. The guy blew me away. Rather than just create a big rectangular box, um, one of the things we tried to do with the house was to shape it to the landscape. There was the opportunity to create various bays and elements of the house, dormers in the roof line, octagonal bays for the hot tub room, the circular tower for the uh, curved stair, the circular tower for the master bedroom and the deck up on the second floor. All of those elements break down the scale of the house to give it a more intimate feeling. Every time you go into another room, there's some type of feature in that room that grabs your attention, and that's what makes it unique. There's been a lot of, you know, big square foot houses built, but anybody that I've talked to that comes into this place, they feel it's comfortable. Natural sunlight is critical. One of the things that makes the light, I think, very effective in this particular project is you'll notice that a lot of the vegetation has been left, which creates a very nice natural frame. But the other thing that it does is um, allows the sunlight that does come through the trees to be a dappled, filtered sunlight. It almost sparkles. When you do do any interiors, you see how light starts to play into rooms. Oh well, we now we know we, we want to have motorized shades and drapes. If we want to do a block out or a blackout of a room, we have roll down shades, which now you're incorporating all into the millwork. Everything has to be recessed, hidden. These are all types of things that come as you're developing through the job. In a house of this size, going from commercial to residential, to actually have all the mechanicals function in a way that you don't hear it, see it, and yet all the individual spaces can be controlled uh, from one, one area, or you can do it from multiple areas. One guy wired this whole house. Uh, it's an 800 amp service with five 200 amp subs. In pulling some of these home runs with a light touch system, you could be on the third floor and have a wire go all the way to the basement to control the single light. At one time he had told me he had 30,000 feet of 12-2 wire. Just, just in 12-2 wire. There's miles and miles of wire. The intent when designing the boathouse was to um, make it integrate smoothly and seamlessly with the design of the house and to make the boathouse feel like it was growing out of the landscape. Prior to the change of the current, the laws of the state, depending on how much frontage you had, you could build your boathouse accordingly. Now the state has mandated that nothing can be built out into the water. It's one of the last ones before they change the rules and regulations. Nobody will ever be able to build one of this caliber again, you know, in the whole lake or anywhere in New Hampshire, basically. It's, it's the last of its kind. The first time I pulled in when the complete foundation was in and I pulled up the, on the end where the uh, garage is and I looked across the foundation and I had the set of plans in my hand and I, yeah, it scared me. <laughs> and in the end, it becomes a a beautiful quilt that has lots of depth and texture, but it all works together as a whole.